Welcome to the Big Bad Bruins Banta Podcast. I am Papa Bruin. Uh, I wish I came with better news and better better times uh, more, and being more jovial, but let's be honest, there's going to be a lot of venom and a lot of crying on this episode after the Bruins uh, lose four, uh, lose last night 6-2 to two in Game 6 and lose the Series 4-2 to the Islanders. And I want to welcome uh, our friend Shannon Walsh uh, from the... Uh, Slapshot Sweet Hats podcast, you know, in-game streaming, YouTube. There's so much to talk about um, to the show yet again. Shannon, uh, how you doing? <laughs> you know, I have been better. <laughs> I think I've been better. That was, we did live stream the game last night. I was hopeful, but nervous. Yes. I enjoyed my glass of whiskey and watched their demise. I wish it was a little more peaceful of a demise, like a little less messy. I would have been okay if they lost in at least a, a quiet fashion, but that was ugly. It was disgusting to watch. Well, yeah, I, I agree. I wore my, one of my uh, appropriate shirts today, this buddy guy, one of the legendary blues guys, and it says, damn right, I got the blues. And it's in <laughs> St. Louis. Um, but but I'll, I'll <laughs> I was very, very angry game five i was extremely angry like everything that happened that game i just was angry because i knew number one they were at home they could have took the, the series by the horns at home again they lose another big game at home and they couldn't do it and they did everything possible to screw it up and it, it just to no end drove me I, like i was throwing shit i was like sitting there like shaking i'm so angry i'm like okay here we go again and then last night that the reason why I asked you to move back, move this back a day is like, I mentally prepared for them to lose. I was already ready. I was ready for them to just come out and crap themselves. But the first period, you know, they go down one, nothing. And I, I say to myself and some people on Facebook and I'm like, Hey, they scored the first two in the last two games and lost. So maybe they will win this one. All right. And then they scored a tie it. And then the horrific nightmare that is the second period reared its ugly head yet again. And then it was over. And the two plays that just stick out in my memory are both by Matt Grizzlick. When Brock Nelson picked his pocket, like it was just, it was so awful. Coming. I'm going to have that in my nightmares for weeks. It, it was <laughs> like seeing that, you know, somehow you fell asleep at the wheel and you got up and you see the headlights coming. I mean, that's what would happen. That is what happened. And then Tuka's didn't do much to help his gods. And I'll tell all the Tuka haters out there. I didn't think he was good. I don't think he was good the last two games. But I'm going to put it on, on started, uh, but that was, I mean, I know that's a very controversial discussion. I'm oh, oh, well, everybody, I listen to Billy Jaffe's <laughs> podcast and they, they, they get all this crap too. And Ty Anderson, they all get the Tuca crap. It's, um, it's unbelievable, but he, he didn't look good. But the thing is, if he was hurt, Cassie's got to get some balls and say, we're going to go with Swayman. I mean, again, I, I like Tuca. I, I'm a big Tuca fan. I'm more about the emblem on the front than the name on the back. So I don't care who plays net. It could be the goddamn Zamboni driver. I don't care. Doesn't matter. I want to win a cup, another one before I die. And the way it's going, it probably won't happen because be another 40 years and I'll be 88. Probably won't happen. So <laughs> it's just, um, I mean, where do we begin? I, I guess we could begin with the, the most, the thing that really really it's ugly had in this whole playoff is the, the injuries killed them. I mean, between Carlo and Miller and, and Craig Smith, because that line was never the same after he got hurt, and Lazar, th their, their blue line was a red hot mess. I mean, I am shocked since you said Curtis Lazar, how much him leaving mid series affected that line. That was, uh, I didn't expect it. I mean, him coming at the trade deadline was already, I, I was like, Oh, cool. Like an, an extra player with Taylor Hall, but then he ended up being such a significant impact for their depth. And then obviously you said Carlo and Miller, and I am of the opinion that Miller should not come back next season, but no, no way. <laughs> I mean, I mean Clearly, they got to do something to bolster that blue line. I'm saying bye to our Facebook Live people. They give them a preview. They just give them a morsel. You know, they got to download the, the, the podcast. But yeah, Kevin, I, you like the guy. You want like De DeBras. I like the kid. I want him to succeed. He's not. Kevin Miller can't stay healthy. It, it sucks to say that. He he just can't. And unfortunately, uh, Kyle might be entering that category too. And I know it was a headshot and all that stuff. And like I said, that injury, I knew he was not coming back to series. I mean, that reminded me of Mark Savard when Hunwick hit him after, you know, the, the year later after, you know, Cook, and that was it for him. And that's exactly the look that Carlo had. I'm like, he's not coming back probably this playoff season. I know I, why, why Cassie was still, like, entertaining the thought of that. It wasn't going to happen. I don't know 
what he was thinking, but the, the Bruins depth is an issue. Like it's really like we're talking forwards and D like everybody. (laughs) And that is the exact reason that the Islanders are able to take advantage of them because the Islanders are not a skilled of a team, but they are, their depth is threatening. And I mean, you didn't think that going into the series. I was like, I mean, I know we don't play well against the Islanders. I said at the beginning of the playoffs, I was the one team in the East. I didn't want to play. <laughs> and here we are, but. Oh, me too. We, I went back in our uh, last podcast a couple of weeks ago before they closed out Washington. I said, I was, I didn't, I didn't fear the Islanders. I just didn't want to play them because I knew it was going to yeah. be a grind. I knew defensively they were going to grind us down. And I, I know they're going to beat the hell out of us. And that's exactly what happened. <laughs> that's exactly what happened. How many, I don't even think the Allen's got any injuries. I don't think they had any guys that left the lineup that I no. remember. No. So the Bruin, it all caught up with them. And I mean, let's go over the games in the series. All right. The first game, they blew doors. They were just dominating. Holy shit. You're like, this could go over, be done in four. And if you remember, that's kind of what happened against the St. Louis. They had one game, they blew them out seven to two, whatever it was. And you're like, this thing's done. They're going to blow them up. Yeah. Game two. They, they had to make a mad comeback, and then Lazan crapped himself. And then oh, game no. three, come on, let's be honest. Marsha, that, that shot misses 99 of 100 times. I'm sorry. That that was just a prayer, right? Then ever since then, it was – it wasn't good. <laughs> but since you brought it up, Martian is he carried this team. They I they would have gotten out in five, maybe four, if Martian didn't play the way he was. He because you brought up prior to us hitting record how the second line absolutely disappeared at the beginning of the series. They were fine in the capital series, and then we get into the Islander series and their stats plummeted. Brad Martian carried this team solely on his shoulders. Agreed. For multiple games. And he's, he did he did regular season level. too. Regular season as well. He yeah. did. It, absolutely. If this team played with half the fire he did, this is probably going seven. At least he, he, I mean, the one he missed two games ago, the one, but he already scored an incredible goal prior to that anyway. I mean, after that, right. The kind of the wraparound, uh, I mean, the fake out and right in front of the net. Um, but he was, he never, he, he never quits. He never, he's got like a Brady kind of thing to him. He, there's no doubt. They were talking about, is Brock Marshall going to be one of the greatest Boston sports athletes? Absolutely. Yeah. He just has that tenacity that never quit like Brady. Same kind of idea. Never quit. Never out of a game. Tried, the, tried his damnedest. Um, but unfortunately, we don't have my Marsh on, on every single line. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just going over the, some of the stats here. Let me bring this up because this is just – I was checking this out and we talked a little bit before. This is just eye-popping. Um, we're going to go here. These are ugly too. <laughs> These are pretty ugly. So we can kind yeah. of go. David Pasternak now. This surprises the hell out of me, but. Yeah, I know we talked about this uh, during the Capitol series too. I had no idea how he was leading in points and he still but, is. But he had a hat in one of the games, right? Yeah, so, he, he did pick it up against the Islanders. He did, like, given that. He, he did. did not oh, wait, yes, Capitals, yes. But, but he, again, he had a hat trick in one of those games. So, you know, let's go. it wasn't like he had had it sprinkled throughout, right? Marshawn, no surprise. Charlie McAvoy, beast, all right? Patrice, I, I expect a little more from him, to be honest with you. I think he's hurt, of course. He's hurt every year because he's just – he's battling constantly, right? Um, now we're going to go into just the depression. <laughs> Crutchy, two and seven, okay. I, I, I wanted more out of this line. Like I, I just said, first line had a combined 36 points. Second line, 19. Third line, 10. And this is the entire playoffs. All, yes, the whole playoffs in 11 games. Fourth line one. Now I went with the guys that were on those lines the majority of the time. I didn't like switch them out and all this shit. Um, Taylor Hall, man, what happened to you, bud? I love you, but I love what you Five did in the Washington series. Negative two plus minus. That is just horrendous. Right. And even Crutchy was a zero. That's still awful. A, Craig Smith battle like a warrior that one game he came back. The game he came back, but after that, he, he was hurt. I mean, it was just, and he's like, the, he's the motor. For that team, he's the mo- for that line, he's the motor. Um, Probably let's go to my, my, my whipping Hall. boy. Go ahead, sorry. Taylor Hall looked good in a couple of those games, like it, he had some good shot opportunities, right. and they just weren't getting through. And I don't know, like, what to blame for that if they just didn't have the chemistry or what it might be. But you can't in the playoffs plummet like that from how you were producing in the regular season, it's just not, it's not going to get you far. There's also two, you can- only have two lines of depth. It, it just seemed a lot. I think you could uh, contest this uh, 
attest to this as well. It just seems the Bruins were always out of position. They were never there for the never there for the rebounds. They always hopped over their stick, and the Islanders oh, yeah. were always yeah. in the right position, always ready, always ready. It, it was it was just mind blowing because it was just so night and day between the two teams. The Islanders did everything possibly right. The Bruins did everything possibly wrong. And that's what they, I think the Islanders needed that a bit for them to win the series. Cause if, if the Bruins played 70 or 80% of what they're capable of, they probably win the series. They were just, they underperformed again. And the Islanders picked their spots every time when they screwed up and capitalized. It was amazing. 19 well, shots. That's, what, that's how they beat the Penguins too. There was one game. I don't remember which one it was later in the series though, that they had under 20 shots against the Penguins. The Penguins had almost 50 <laughs> and they still beat the Penguins because they just have a high quality shots and they nitpick where your weaknesses are and capitalize right away. It doesn't take more than three shots for them to nitpick where you're falling apart. I mean, I really think the shot uh, statistic is overrated because like you said, the Penguins and Bruins get 40 plus shots, but if like 80% of them from the perimeter and they're not like high danger chances, who gives a shit? Like, the Islanders had as many high danger or scoring chances. The Bruins did most of these games and they had half the shots. Again, they picked their spots to wait for the Bruins to screw up and they capitalized like almost every single time. It was just mind blowing. Like they, it was incredible. So speaking of uh, mistakes and screw ups, Matt Grizzlick, my God, he was just so terrible in that game. I he was just. And I love like of the blue liners that like are a question mark for the Bruins. He is not one that I typically want to nitpick, but he really dug himself a grave. Like, oh, he, I, I call him the new Tory Krug. That's Tory Krug offensively. Great defensively nightmare. Like what again, Tuka haters when Grizzlick's first cough up, everyone blamed it completely on Tuka Rask. And I'm like, if Grizzlick doesn't cough that up, there's no breakaway. There's no goal. Like, I mean, he, that, that's it. That, cause and effect. People don't understand the cause and effect thing. Um, granted, did Tuka really do a lot to, you know, bail the team out? No, he did not. Let's be honest. No, no, no. I mean, there's, there's a two pronged issue there. But. Yeah, but I, I just, my whole thing is like, I can't, you can't put that all on one guy. Oh, no, I mean, you, you can't. No, you really can't. I thought that was like, you know, probably 60 40 Grizzlick on that one. Right. Um, and the other one, right in front of the net, two feet away, coughs it up and they score again. It's like, Dude, what are you what are you doing? Like you're the, you're the number two guy right now, and he's not a number two guy. Let's be honest, he's not. He's not, he's not a number two guy. Um, let's continue down this this nightmare. Uh, Nick Ritchie, dude, like he played good two games ago. I think he's pretty good in game five. Um, but shit, man, you, you went for the regular season. You were like everybody's like, who is this guy? This isn't the guy in the playoffs first Tampa in the bubble who was terrible. It was a complete liability. But then he reverted right back to that again. <laughs> it's just he he's interesting to me particularly looking at the expansion draft and who they're they have to right. live unprotected because he did improve and in an interesting comparison yes he did revert back to his old ways but so did brad marchand at the beginning of the playoffs and a lot of people were like stop right. taking dumb penalties stop, stop doing dumb dumb shit and nick ritchie was doing that he took a couple dumb penalties that turned to goals and that was what was really pissing me off because nick ritchie did have a personality on the ice that the bruins really needed it in terms of you know, standing up for themselves that no one else was doing. <laughs> against well, that's the, the that's a, that's the difference between you know, like Brad and we've said about Pasternak. They make up for their shit because scoring wise, right? Because they score right, right. Goals. And Nick Ritchie's not going to do he, that. He, so. No, no. Big big dick Nick was very limp in this one. I'll tell you that. Mike Riley, man, how many times are you going to miss the net? I mean, how many times? How many times are you going to either defer and not even take the shot? Or you're going to completely miss the net. I don't know how many cross ice passes this team did that were just. I remember Charlie McAvoy in Game Five when they were trying to they, they were scrambling to get the tying goal. Like, dude was on. I'm like, just take the goddamn shot. What are you doing passing across? There's like three dudes in the middle. It's not going to get through. Bruins passing actually nauseated me this series. They could not make a pass for their goddamn life. And they've always been a team that overpasses, but at least they were making the passes. Like this series, I, they couldn't I, make I said the, Bru the, Bru the Bruins pass more than someone that had to take a dump on the high, driving on the highway. Like you got to get home. You're passing people. You get <laughs> that's, what, that's what that reminded me of. And I didn't, you know, I don't want to be too gross, but, <laughs> but Mike Riley, as good as he played, I thought, in the regular season, 
And the playmaking, I, I just think it caught up with him because, again, this is his first playoff season. He never played the playoffs before. And here, here's one that you're going to be – I like, just laughed a little when I saw his statistics. Go on. <laughs> well, you, want, you want to laugh? It would be horrified. Charlie Coyle, minus eight. <laughs> That's what I was laughing about. Minus eight. That is – Wow. It's not shocking, but it's incredible. Wow. That's that's by far the worst of anybody. No one's even, let me see. Not, I don't think anyone's close. even close to that. No, the the the, sec, the worst ones like Lazan and Corrali at minus three, in DeBrusque, minus eight. Holy shit! And, and, and it's it's almost unfair to him because, as my friend said, he was on a line with two toads. We call them the toads: the ghost yeah. and uh, Richie, limp, a big limp. Uh, I mean, Coyle showed some signs, but again, he, he just, he was just set up to fail by the next guy on our list, Jake DeGhost. That's his new nickname, DeGhost. Holy shit, Washington series, what, he scored two goals, first two games, we're like, all right, maybe he's coming out of this shit. All right, great. Then after that, passenger, DeGhost, nowhere to be found. I'm happy they benched his ass. He's done here. You got to ship him out to Seattle or just try to trade him and get a fifth round pick or something. I don't know what to say. But people made a good point. This is like the 2015. Barzell didn't do anything before Carlo got hurt, but then after that, he, he lit it up. And you, then it, all you're thinking is him, and then you're thinking, well, who do we get? Oh, wait. We got Zaboral, who may be a five or six defenseman, maybe. DeBrusque, who basically went from a, a, a second line or two, maybe not even on the team. And then you got Cision. You may watch them more than me, the P. Bruins, whatever, but that dude's not going to make his spot on this team either. Um, so that, that draft, now because you saw it head-to-head -head in essence in a way, beyond disaster, beyond. That is, we've already talked about, I know we beat a dead horse, but this, that's franchise changing shit that went on. But, yeah. but, but to talk about Barzal, and he is like Sidney Crosby to me, for me because he's skilled, but he's a cheap shot out as whiny bitch. Because he just absolutely changed that series for the Islanders. Oh, absolutely. As soon as Kyle went down, that was the, that was a trick. That was a changing point. That was it. Absolutely point. changed it. They, he changed not only the, the scoring for that team, but the yep. momentum on the ice, he kept control yep. for the offense on the ice for the Islanders, which the Bruins were desperately trying to take control of. And Barzell was like, absolutely not. And then it's just a kick in the shins for everybody who was a Bruins fan back in 2015 that saw that draft and oh. is looking at Jake DeBrusque, who's getting healthy scratch for these games when the Bruins can't get offensive control of the puck. And, and I think that's a good segue because we're talking about Barzell. So quickly, the rest of this list is just garbage. The, the third, uh, fourth <laughs> line did nothing. Corrali, Wagner, and Lazar, one point between the three of them. That, that, that's inexcusable. So, but let's talk about the, um, the refs. And now, this is not the reason they lost. Okay. The reason they lost is they're thin. The reason they lost, they, Tuca was not on top of his game and uh, they had no secondary scoring. That's why they lost. But the refs were part of it to a degree. I would say if you cut up the pie, I think they're 15%. Uh, okay. Um, Two games ago, when the, when the uh, they had three power play goals, the ticky tack on Corrali, um, uh, Brazil basically uh, trying to put uh, Crutchy in a wheelchair by like cross checking him 14 times in the back, and then they had the balls, pun intended, to almost give Crutchy a major for actually just poking him in the thigh. Like, come on! But the Palmieri miss last night was just that one really. It like, I was already pissed about the refs, and I'm not one to typically complain about the right. ref. I don't like there's so much a, a, for lack of a better term opinion that needs to go into the calling hockey games because it's, right. it's all you know what you see right there and there's not a lot of replay that um I can't fault them they're the professionals right but when you see shit like that with Paul Mary last night it blatant he actively chose to elbow McAvoy in the head and that was like the third cheap shot that they had on Charlie McAvoy in that game they were actively looking at McAvoy as someone to target the entire well, game well I mean if you think about it smart that you not not to cheap Sean but you're gonna you you get to beat down the best players like you oh exactly I mean I don't blame them it's the playoffs but right not to cheap shot him in the face after right. the whistle and then start taunting him while he's on the ground the athletic trainers out on the ice and the refs are like play on like are you well, kidding well, <laughs> Paul Mary, there was another play in boston that he high sticked somebody and literally was looking like this because he thought he was gonna get called did not get called when he elbowed uh, mcavoy he even was like look at the refs thinking like mcavoy died and was like what 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 
and they didn't call it still. And I'm like, and I didn't, I, I, I was so, I was, I was already like mentally preparing for the loss. So I, I didn't realize that McAvoy missed six minutes. Like he went to the, he went to the dock. Yeah, that's what I was pissed when they went down the tunnel and then the Islanders got power play. So McAvoy couldn't even be out there on the penalty kill because he was down the tunnel and then they scored. And I was like, of course, great. <laughs> but, what, but what's terrible is that um, the compete level of this team just, you know, the, it's just the needle went from 10 yeah. in game one to almost one. Or zero. So, so that's why I get frustrated about the referees. It's not necessarily because they're missing. Obviously, a power play is a fantastic opportunity. Right. But when you're deliberately missing calls and biasly calling a game, obviously fans are going to get pissed. But the momentum and the energy from a team very quickly plummets, particularly when your coach is actively talking out about oh. how you're getting called biased against. And granted, I don't blame Bruce Cassidy at all. If you're like, take that fine, sir. Well, but, that's what Barubi did, but he didn't get right. fined in 19. But, my problem is that the, then the Bruins are feeling absolutely deflated. They're going into a game and they're like, we're already losing. We're already on the short end of the stick. We're right. already fighting for our season. And the refs aren't even going to give us a call if I'm getting elbowed in the mouth and getting teeth knocked. Well, out. I mean, like, they got the, they got the first, they got the first two power plays this past game. Um, and I almost thought they weren't even going to make score on it, but thank God they pulled it out in the last few seconds of the power play. Thank God. They, they took a two man advantage too, to do that. Um, the special team sucked. Let's be honest. They weren't good shorthanded they weren't good with the ball they were just they weren't good five and five they weren't good after game one they weren't good <laughs> they just weren't good at all um but now we look at let's go to uh, you know the, the topic at hand Tuka Rask. uh was he horrible throughout this whole series no i don't think he was at all i think he won one or two games this series for you but he he broke he broke down he's evidently been hurt but if you pulled him in the fourth game, because uh, game uh, five, I'm sorry, because of maintenance, and for him, he's messed. Something's wrong. You you got to put Swayman in the next set last night, and I'm a Tuka guy, but you got to put the healthy guy in. You can't put the guy that's Tuka has to be at probably 80, 90 percent to be good. He's probably at 60 right now. And that that's not going to cut it, you know. Especially when your defense is a sieve. <laughs> Let's be honest, and, and even the forwards have did a horrible job too, with, you know, defensively too. Yeah, I mean, I've said quite a few times during our streams that I am not typically one to support. I usually find ways to criticize Tuka Rask, I'll admit it. But I said quite a few times, he looks great. He's playing great. I can't find a reason. Right, right. You said that. To right, criticize yeah. him. Then we get later in the series, he's obviously wearing down. That's fair. They didn't give Swayman any playing time. And Tuka Rask is not the kind of player anymore that can play full time and not wear down. He's just not. That's no, not, I mean, he's not the guy. he doesn't do that in the regular season either. So when he gets later in a playoff series, he hasn't had any maintenance. He hasn't had any breaks, even in the games that they were blowing out the opponent, then it's not surprising me, even if he is dealing with a lingering injury, which I don't understand why Bruce Cassidy brought that up. If he didn't want to stir the pot and make everyone get, freak yeah, out. So if he is, once they pull him, like you said, in game five, I thought they should have pulled him sooner. They didn't. Then they pull him. I have no idea why they would have started Rask, especially when he was already taking backup shots in well, practice. Well, I, I think it was my, uh, Felger on um, 98.5 said, like, why is the Bruins, like, so opposed to changing up goalies? The Islanders did it. The Canes did it. Like, you, you just see the momentum turning somehow. Just change him out. And if two – like, th this was an easy decision. Took is hurt. Like, easy decision. But, you know, do I think Swayman would have won his games? I – I don't probably not. I don't think it would have been a significant factor, no. but also there's no reason to put an injured goaltender. And in when you have a backup who has proven that he can play both in high pressure games, since he did so well in college and who played in the regular season for at least 10 games and played well, he had good stats. I don't, and granted he did play like shit at the very beginning of the third period he went into, but then he was fine. So, so what's funny is that uh, when uh, uh, game five, when the Bruins came back and, you know, it was five to four and I'm like, well, took off the hook now. Because he left with yeah. the foot. So the tri it triggered so many Tuka haters. The trigger was like, what do you mean he's off the hook? What? No, I meant this particular game. He can't, he's not going to get the loss now. It's going to go to Swayman because he left the game winning goal. It's called like, it's called like math people. So just try to figure it out. Um, but the Tuka haters, here's the thing. If, if I was Tuka Rass right now, seriously. So 34 years old, I think he's 34, right? Back, yeah. back, back issues. Half the fan base fucking hates him. Um, I'm done. I, why would I even want to come back for this? Like, why would I want to go through rehab? Why do I want like he had as much as like um, 
Finn's a very, uh, one, I, I met one of my, the, the Big Bad Bruins Nation fan. He's from Finland too, but they're very serious. And Tuka was right that when he was a rookie, he was, he was insane. I have a, I have a hockey card from after the cup. He's in a hot tub with a frigging cop going bananas. He's got the long hair going, but he toned down as he got older. Of course he matured, but they're very stern. They're very, you know, uh, you know, uh, serious and, and people, I guess people just don't like that. Like he doesn't care. He, that's just how they are. If the Finnish people are very, just that's how they are. They don't show their emotions too much, but he got, he's has to hear the, the hear the shit. In the, you got to hear it. You know what I mean? Like you got to hear it and be like, I personally be like, you guys just don't give a fuck and don't care. And I don't need this shit. I really, I, I mean, he, beside winning the cup, he, he, he's won a Venza. Vesna, he has, he should have, he would have won the con smite that they won in 19. I mean, he's had a great career. And it's funny when I bring up Tim Thomas and people like, and I'm like, he had a great year. He had an all world year. But if you look at the rest of his career playoffs, he sucked. He wasn't good. He went out the first round, I think twice, once or twice outside of 11. Yeah. So, I, you gotta work, win the cup and think, then the haters go away. <laughs> well, I mean, the cup thing is always going to be, you know, it's going to put him ahead of everybody else anyway. But if you look at the body, he, they had, I mean, I just went over the uh, defensive core um, from that year. You had Chara, Boychuk, Ferentz, McQuaid, and the other two escaped me at the moment. But if you think about arguably, everyone but maybe McQuaid are better than everyone but McAvoy. <laughs> <laughs> on you know what I mean on, on the team right now um it, it again it depends on who's in front of you it, it depends on if your team could score like Tuka can't score folks like he let up a couple goals like the four to one loss they had he only let up two goals it you should win those games you should win those games you let up two goals less you should win they can't score I mean they couldn't score so it's but the thing is being a fan this long it's the same shit no secondary scoring yeah. defense isn't big they don't have big defensemen they're not physical anymore like how many times are we going to do this how many can we change this Shannon? yeah i mean that's part of the reason this is full on my own conspiracy theory but this is part of the reason i think that they started him and part of the reason i think they didn't pull him last night is that they don't want they're trying to convince him not to just f off and retire yet is it would have been you know more of a reason for him to be like screw it if they pulled him in game five and game six and put Swayman in because that's putting blame on him when it's not necessarily his fault. And I, I hope these fans know that if Tuka does retire number one, I don't know what the haters are going to do with themselves. Like they're going to have to come out of their mother's basements. <laughs> and they're going to have to like come it out. It better not the... go on Swayman because he hasn't done anything. So. Back, it's like they're in their own pandemic. Like they have to come back into the world now, remove the Tuka hate mask, and go back <laughs> into the world. And it, it's it's just like if if you have Swayman, uh, you're going to have to get another. You're going to have to get a veteran guy. So it's not going to be uh, Vlad R and him. It's not going to happen. And number one, you get ready for the growing pains because he's going to have them. Okay. And I, I don't, seriously, I'm looking at this team right now. Are they going to get better next year? I don't think so. I think you don't have any debt. Tell me, I mean, do you know the Pete Bruins roster pretty well? Not, not since I moved to DC. I used to know it pretty well since. Okay. I moved well, but you there. probably have a gist of who's maybe in the farms. So I don't really, but who is, I didn't even know, I, I just was reminded that Trent Frederick was a first round pick and I'm like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> I forgot that. <laughs> oh, he's a first round pick. I heard him on the uh, podcast. Was that during the Don Sweeney era? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is uh, that what, makes sense. three or four tracks. years ago, right? Six, 17 draft, maybe 16. Yeah, that tracks. And <laughs> I was, and they even said he's, they, I, I won the podcast, he's Ty Anderson and Billy Jaffe's podcast. And they said, well, yeah, he'll be a, he'll be a good uh, bottom six forward. Why are you picking a bottom six forward in the first round? Why, why are you doing that? So, but I don't know who else. Can, the Bruins can never have first round picks. They, well, Don Sweeney specifically actually can never have first round picks because he butchers them. <laughs> oh, but, but like Stunika came up, did nothing. Okay. Coleman, if that, if that's your answer, when things aren't, you, you're, you're screwed. Okay. Cause he was a minus three and he didn't play much. <laughs> that tells you something there. Coleman, Frederick, he's, he's like, he'll be a good fourth liner. That he'd be a good fourth liner. Right. Uh, muck it up, whatever. I like what he did, you know, with Ovechkin and stuff like that. Before, I mean, with uh, in the regular season with uh, Wilson, but I mean, uh, it's uh, the Finnish kid, Vakalanen. Is that his name? The defense Yeah. Yeah. He's he's been in and out of the line the last few years. Has he made really have an impact of any kind? No. Um, Cision's garbage. Like 
They, I think their farm club is just crap. I mean, I don't know how Beecher's doing in Team USA and all that stuff. And he, they was, uh, I think he's, where's he at, BU? Um, hockey East, I believe. I don't remember. I'm sorry, for people. I'm just not too too much into the, the college, into the minor leagues. But I don't know how many guys they have that could come in and save the day. Like McAvoy is the only guy that came in, in, in like within a year and made an immediate impact. I don't see I don't see the cavalry coming, Shannon. I don't know what you think, but I don't see any trades being done. I don't know who they're going to. I mean, I don't know. I mean, they do have quite a bit of cap space. Which right. Is, they have quite a few people they have to re-sign. Granted, the fact that Taylor Hall looked like shit in the second round of this playoffs is good for the Bruins cap because everyone keeps telling me that he's going to sign for $6 million. And I'm like, I don't know what you're smoking, but he's not signing for $6 million. No, I don't think so. <laughs> So I think they've got some wiggle room there. And I, I don't know what the free agency market looks like just because I'm trying to get through the playoffs at the moment. But like, I think that they, because they have so much money to play with, can probably swing a defenseman on there. But again, there's no depth. You can't swing a, an entire third line and like two, well, two, I mean, two blue liners as well. Charlie, Charlie Coyle's uh, last year in his postseason has pretty much cemented that it has been Gretchen Brack because Charlie Coyle is not a second line center right now. He's not. And what's scary is you got five more years in. Holy shit. <laughs> and then I'm just looking at what lies ahead. Tuca, we already discussed that. I think he's 50-50 coming back. I think it's 50-50 comeback, uh, hometown discount, or retire. Uh, Taylor Hall, I don't think there's going to be a market for him beside the Bruins, to be honest with you. I no. He would be like, well, he, did, he made one round, but then he completely fizzled out and died in the second round. So what has he improved? One round? That's all he's improved. So that isn't a whole lot. He only had three goals, right? And one was no empty netter against uh, the Isles, and he had two against Washington. That's not earth shattering shit. You need at least five, six goals from him, at least. That line, nineteen points. You should have been in the twenty-five point range at least, right? With those three. Yeah. Guys. Someone said to me, "Well, you got to pay for the first round pick," and I was like, "He, he, it, he's been a first round pick years ago. Like he's been on four teams. He's not a. You don't pay for the pick anymore. <laughs> or the first overall pick. That I was like, that's not a price tag I have to look at anymore." It's like people uh, people looking at that I have a bachelor's degree that I got in 1995. No, they don't. <laughs> Let's go. Move on. The piece of it doesn't matter what round he what is he doing now. Did he have a good year? They made a good point. If they did not make those trades, the trade deadline, they don't make the playoffs. I, I'm almost convinced the Rangers would have caught him. I'm almost convinced of that. It was good that they got that. You know, they got that. That's like only thing that's Don Sweeney. This is kind of let, let me go back one. So I think Crutchy will be coming back with Hall. I think they'll both come back. Uh, we got Craig Smith another couple of years, right? Another year or two at least, I believe. Yeah, I think it's like three-year deal. Hopefully he'll recover. It's again, I think he killed the second line, not on per, but he was injured. That just, it didn't help because I think it threw off Hall, it threw off Crutchy, just threw off their chemistry big time, right? DeBrusque, as fast as you can pack his bags, you can get him on time. <laughs> like I think he's definitely going to be up for the the expansion draft. I think for sure, unless he has some clause. I'm sure he may. I don't know. Um, I think you, you let him walk. There's no doubt about it. I think, um, you know, the lack of depth, we already talked about the problem. And then, you know, looking at what Sweeney's done, and I know we, we, we already talked about, the, you know, the 15 draft. But of outside of Charlie Coyle, Johansson in 19, and this trade deadline, there's nothing else. He didn't, he didn't, did he draft McAvoy? I don't think so. I could be wrong. Did he try? He, no, he did draft McAvoy, right? Yeah, he, he was 2017, I think. Pasternak was not him. Um, so he, that's all he's really done because there's no one else in a draft that I can re recall top of my head that's really made any impact on this team. Swayman maybe, but did he, I mean, his, his, his uh, scouting staff did that anyway, right? Um, I don't know how much better they get, honestly. You're looking, they're going to go back to their division lineups next year. So you're going to be back with Montreal and Tampa and Florida and Toronto, which Toronto is going to have, is eventually going to break this freaking curse. I hope, I enjoyed it thoroughly, but now that Montreal advanced, I'm like, what did I do? I, I think it's power the Habs to do well. Because I think the Habs can beat Vegas. I don't know about Colorado, but I think they can beat Vegas. Yeah, I don't – I mean, I don't think Vegas is consistent enough to go any farther. They, they've been streaky the entire playoffs, but – um i know i'm in the minority there so but, but you know everybody talked about tuka's salary like they pay it but they're like carrie price gets paid 10 million dollars a year and this is probably his best playoff since he's been in montreal so how many years he's been in montreal eight ten years so has he forever. earned his money Not literally really forever <laughs> but he could i could you could see him con Smythe. i mean you could see them win this thing i mean i really can 
Uh, I think Tampa is going to be a, a really tough out for them if they make it to the finals, but they could, if Carey Price gets hot, continues to get hot, he could win them. That, that's just like what happened with Lamar off. He, he was, he was, wow. Stud, stud. He outplayed too. And that's what happens. You get to have a hot goalie sometimes. Um, but again, I don't, you know, I see this team maybe finishing third in the division come next year. I mean, Tampa is going to be better than them. Toronto's better than them. Montreal may be with them right now. Florida's better than them right now, I think. Um, I that division looks like that's going to be. Yeah, awful. they're pretty stat. Who am I? Buffalo sucks. <laughs> they'll, they'll continue to suck. And am I missing another team? Because it's been a while since we've had the real divisions. Um, so they're uh, in a cat fight. I mean, a dog fight or both fight, cat and dog fight. Um, so I, I don't know how they're going to get better. I mean, do you see them get any better? I, I mean, they may get one free agent, but like, they're not. Who, what big names are they've out gotta, there? They've got to make another splash in the trade market. I don't know what it's going to look like, but they can't sit on Who are they trading, market. though? Who's tra- who's Who could you I, dangle? I mean, they've got to try to get something for DeBrusque. <laughs> like, they've gotta, they can't just let him walk. Wait, I got some I get some uh, old papers and paper clips on my desk. <laughs> like, I like. I don't know what they're going to get, but they got to try to get something. He's, I, he's untradeable. I mean, he's, no, no one's trading no for that guy. I, I mean, unless you get like a six-round pick. I mean, that's all you're going to get. I, I can't see you getting a roster guy. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like, like I said, I don't want them. They, I don't want them screwing around with first round picks again. They're they're horrible at it. Like throw a first in there if you can get. It's some. like a power play. It's like decline. Can we decline the first round pick, please? They're gonna pick twenty first. Uh, Billy Jaffe said that's confirmed. So they pick twenty first. Who's out there at twenty one? No one really. It's a crapshoot out of the top fifteen. You know. So I don't know, Shannon. <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna be interesting off season. Let's put it that way. But. I don't know how much they, again, if that farm system was loaded, like, you know, you look at these teams like Chicago went to the toilet after they won those cups because guys had big contracts, couldn't sign everybody. They get, but they get young kids back in that lineup and Chicago was on the cusp of making the playoffs. This year. I, I bet they make them next year, but that's, that's the natural progression. You're really, really good. Then you can get really shitty and then you get good again. The Bruins just try to stay relevant and just teeter totter there, but they're never, let, let's be honest, 19. Tampa got outed. Who else got outed that, that, that year that we couldn't believe that everybody just fell apart and no one was left. You know, every big team that was in their way got eliminated. The Penguins, everybody, Gonzo. They had the Red Sea parted and all you had to do is just do your goddamn job. And they couldn't do, and they couldn't do it. This team. So and then we'll get into ask Papa Bruin and Shannon. Um, I know I'm much older than you, but I am at the point in my life right now with this team following since the mid eighties. They are a choking dog of a franchise, okay, when it comes to the big stage, okay? And people are like, well, you know, why do you, why do you say that? They, they don't have a killer instinct. I ne- be, now, 11 was the outlier, but remember, they had to win three game sevens. It wasn't like it was a cakewalk when they won that thing. It was like, and if you thought they were going to win any of those game sevens before, you're lying to yourself. You're lying. Every game seven, I was, I was like puking up blood. I had... You know, <laughs> You know, my eyes were like burning. I mean, it was just, it was like torture, right? So if you thought they were going to win that cup that year, you, Vancouver was a juggernaut, right? They were loaded, okay? Um, Montreal always had your number. Philly was like a revenge thing, right? And Tampa Bay, I think, was just kind of one of those upstart, you know, they kind of, all pl- you know, played over their heads a bit. So, but still, that went to game seven anyway. Won nothing, right, on Nathan Horton. So but after that, 13 Again, I think they just – Chicago was just a wagon. I think they were a wagon. They were loaded. They were just so loaded. And everybody still blinks, took it for the game. But Chicago was better team, man. And, they you know, and they could have made a series of a Chris Kelly could hit the broadside of a barn. You thought that passed or not. I don't know if you ever saw it, but Google Chris Kelly 2013. Oh, no, I saw it. I, I, that was when I first start, really started watching hockey. It was between 2011 and 2013. And I watched each of those series. And every time I would text my other friend that was very into hockey, and I was like – Every time they moved on to the next round, I was like, they're screwed. They're not, like, they're well, not going any further. Now, Pasternak, when he missed against the Islanders, I mean, he was trying to one time, which I don't know why, but he was kind of far out from the net to a degree off the off the circle. Like, Chris Kelly was in the crease almost and just still missed it. We, like, I still don't at this day know how that even happened. I, I still can't even understand it. But in 19, that was there. In 14 as well, they were a frigging wagon, and they lost to Montreal in seven. And that seventh game, they just completely crapped their pants. They, they didn't show up. So they made a good point too. They like the, the non show up games, the last two against the last one against the Islanders. I went to the game seven and 14. It was horrendous. Oh, was okay. You, were there. you know how bad. Yes. It was dramatic. They, 
And that was at home, right? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it was at home. Game seven against St. Louis, you knew they down two nothing. They're done, and that's sad. <laughs> with the with the Marchants and the Bergerons and the Boston, they're done. They're it's already the same done. Thing as last night, like you're watching the game and you're like, "There's no way." Like even if they score again, no. You can just tell in the pace that they're skating, in like the way they're handling the puck. Like at least control the puck. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I mentally, <laughs> yeah, I mentally checked out after Game Five because I knew they were done. I mean, I, I watch it because you know I'm a fan. I want to watch them. But here's the thing: I, I love this team to no end. I love them. Evidently, that's why I have you know a Facebook page and I follow them. And I love them. Um, but it's one of those things like you could be like love something and be sick of it sometimes, or just get fed up with it. I mean, we're all been in relationships. <laughs> I mean, you know, you get fed up, but then you make it whatever. I mean, the Bruins come out and they win two cups. Everybody forgets everything. But the thing is, being a franchise since the, two, since the 1920s, being an original six, you've been in 20 Stanley Cup finals, you won six. That's terrible in any stretch of the imagination. I don't care what era it was. Like, Montreal has 26. And I know they had the, the French-Canadian players back in the day, but they have like 20-something cups. The Bruins have six. And they've been in 20 finals. Now, if you have only been in like, like by accident, you should have won at least 10 of them by accident. Okay. You weren't outplayed all those series. I mean, you weren't like that bad in all those, even when they played Edmonton in 88, 90, 88, they had Gretzky and Messi and all that. So maybe that was a stretch 90. They should have won, but Jacobs didn't want to get it, pay any money to get that one other guy. They just need one more guy and they couldn't get that one guy. Um, but then I like the Patriots, right? The Patriots over the, the 2000s, you just thought they're going to win all the time. They just had that Assumed they were going to swagger. Win. They had that killer instinct. They had it, they had it, they had it. And the Bruins have never, outside of 11, have never had it. They, outside of 11, never had it. 11, that team believed in themselves. They were, we're going to do this. And you were like, on top, you like, yes, let's go. But the, the rest of the, no. I mean, I don't see it. <laughs> Beside Brad Marchand again, who else is that guy that just is a lightning rod? Nobody. It's supposed to be David Posture. <laughs> I don't like it. Again, that that open netter, that was another big moment that screwed them in that. The, the, the thing about that series, one more, is that they could not extend leads. They could not go up to nothing because multiple people, Ty Anderson, I heard about and all this, and I think, you know, we spoke about it. If they extend lead, that game changes. They're up to nothing, right? They, that changes the game. That means the Islanders are chasing, right? They got to really, and that's not their game. That's not, they wait, they wait in the shadows for you to screw up and bounce. So if they're down to nothing, they're like, they, they're, you know, tightening the stick harder and so, so forth. The Bruins played right into their game. And Barry Trotz, to your point, all coached Cassidy so badly. Yes. Like, not only on the ice, but using the propaganda and the mind games and shit. He, he got under, he got under his skin and all that stuff. And like poking, like poking crap at Patrice Bergeron. And everyone's like, well, why, why could he do that? Patrice Bergeron's the best, but whatever, like. It worked. You being bullshit. It worked. You're mad. Piss people off. <laughs> you're, it worked. You're trying to figure out why you did it. It's working. <laughs> but, but look at look at Barry Trotz. So Barry Trotz won the cup with Washington. Okay. Then he's taken to the Islands to two consecutive conference finals. Okay. Washington, ever since they got rid of Trotz, they had a fallout, right? Management and him. And, it was a fallout. Yeah. Cause yeah. that was, I lived in DC when they won and I went to the parade and yeah. then literally the next day they were like, Barry Trotz is leaving the Capitals. And I was like, what the hell? Like, and then they had three consecutive first round exits. So that just tells you he is a good, good coach. Yeah. And the Islanders are going nowhere. I, they're not going anywhere. They, this team is going to be someone to reckon with for a while. Just like I said, the core. They made great. Palmari was great. The other guy they got from New Jersey worked for them. Like they just had this reminded me of the 11 team a lot of the Bruins. You know what I mean? Like Which they had grind the my gears. Like, I, oh. <laughs> but they, but I mean, they do, as I'm thinking about, it, they remind me of the 11 team a lot, right? They just brought, they just, they, they, they could beat the more talented teams because they just grinded them to death. Right. They had the hot goalie, like Tim Thomas. I mean, um, and they, they just, like I said, they just, had the other team play into their hands, into their game. And the Bruins went hook, line, and sinker. And it was and it was uh, pretty uh, pretty evident. I mean, uh, they – Jesus, man. You just like Brock Nelson and then Barzal, and you're like, they're coming in cl cl Clutterbuck, and they just kick in the shell. The Bruins at every turn, Palmari killed the Bruins with the Devils. He killed the Bruins with the Islanders. He killed them. And it's like, hey, guys, the guys that are killing you, could you, like, pay more attention to them? I don't know why you don't. I mean, I don't get it. But it, it was, I think the Bruins needed this uh, ass kicking, really. I think this needs to finally shake it up and say, because you, you know Jacobs ain't happy because he didn't get any more money. He lost 
almost two a season and a half with, with fans, right? And he he's all about making the cash because this is a cash cow for him. This is not a passion, you know. That's true. And to be fair, the Bruins would have been assaulted by the Tampa Bay Lightning. So oh. like <laughs> it would have been literally assaulted. So I, I do agree that this was the gut check that I think that they needed going into mm-hmm. the offseason because the lightning would not have been as much. They wouldn't have been pretty. That probably five. You it, know, would have been again, a, it wouldn't have been the culture shock that this was, though. They thought they were more comfortable against the Islanders and they just expected to move on, which is why once they get later in the series, they're like, oh, oh shit, we're behind. Versus if they went into the lightning series, I – I'm almost confident to say again, five generous. I wouldn't have been shocked if it was a sweep. Like the island, or, or excuse me, the lightning are annoyingly dangerous. <laughs> like, well, right. I mean, I mean, someone made a good point that they can win six five or two nothing. I mean, they could play any game. They could do whatever they want. And plus, with the Bruins injuries, how are you going to stop Kucherov and Stamkos and Point and yeah? I mean, they wouldn't have they had no shot. They had even worse shot than last year. Even worse, yeah. I think. All right, Shannon. So uh, enough of the uh, uplifting talk. <laughs> Let's get into um, Ask Papa Bruin and Shannon. Okay, so we're going to get into it here. So, again, uh, we're going to give away a shirt. This probably gonna, I have a shirt in the mail to you. Hopefully, you get it sometime. Uh, let me know when you don't, but you're supposed to get a What You Drink and shirt. So, uh, I'm, gonna be drink- I'm in a very slow mail zip code. So, okay, that's right. Come. So, maybe it'll come, <laughs> maybe it'll come via um, Pony Express. So, we'll see. All right. Okay. No, not, we don't have a lot of questions today because I think a lot of people are just done right now. That they just, <laughs> they just checked out. I know, I'm trying to avoid Twitter. <laughs> oh, I know. Uh, all right, this is going to be uh, Michael. All right, well, Michael Knipe, you had four questions. Okay, you can't have four, but let's go. Uh, <laughs> somebody monopolized this thing. Uh, all right, big topic. No one's talking about the expansion draft. Who should the Bruins purposely allow expose? I hear the crack and may take Lausanne. Lol. LOL. <laughs> This could help with the cap and getting rid of some players that we don't want anyways. Uh, my thing, my guy would be DeBrus, but he may have something. I mean, are we done with Lazan? Is he like, let's go and forget it? I don't think we should be done with him yet, even though he didn't play good. The four names I've heard are Lazan, Frederick, Richie, and DeBrusque. I would not want uh, up Frederick. No way. I believe Richie. I think Richie. I haven't looked at their contracts, so I don't yeah, know right. financially which one makes the most sense. Um and I think it's going to depend quite a bit on what other players Seattle's interested in in the league to right. know whether they're more inter- whether they have gaps in offense or defense. And that's the Bruins have to play it strategically, right? Like right. if they if the Kraken really need a defend defenseman, then you know we've got plenty of shitty defensemen we can leave unprotected. But if they need an op- offense player, then like we got to play it differently. We got to look at contracts. Yeah, so there's a lot more to it, right? Um, again, there's not a lot of questions this week, and I understand people are upset. Um, why do the Bruins do this to us every season? We already just told you. <laughs> they here we are here. I don't know if you're a star, you may not be a Star Wars fan, or you may be, I don't know, but there's a scene from the original Star Wars, the first one, where uh, R2D2 uh, R2 and C3PO are walking through the desert, and it's like a billion degrees, and there's oil coming out. And C3PO says, uh, we are made to suffer. That is our lot in life. That is Bruins fans. Okay, that is what we are. We are made to suffer. That is our lot in life. <laughs> Uh, I think that might be it. One, all right, I know another one. I have to find it. I can't find it. One person asked us a non-hockey question, which I love, which I have to find now. Do you consider the movie Die Hard a Christmas film? I haven't seen it. You know, it Die Hard? <laughs> no. Oh, you'd be high I'm high really high. bad with my my uh, movie repertoire. All right, you should see it. Okay, it's really good. <laughs> I don't know if you're into action pictures, one of the best action pictures ever. That's I, I mean, people debate this all the time, right? I'm big into Christmas movies. So if it is a Christmas movie, then I... <laughs> all right, let me give you, let me give you the, the 10,000 foot uh, cliff note version of it, if you will. Um, so it took place during the holiday season, okay? And then it was a bunch of terrorists overtook this uh, building that Bruce Willis was in and all this. And then he found his way and kicked everybody's ass and he won. You know, blah, blah. I don't consider it a Christmas film because Christmas film to me... It's about like being with family, you know, either if it's a uh, Christmas vacation or the Christmas story or elf or whatever. It's like, has that family element. I don't think a terrorist and blowing up buildings with Christmas. I mean, that's pretty much 364 days of our life. Like we don't need 360. Like, <laughs> so um, <laughs> that was a good question, but no, I don't think it's a Christmas film. Sorry. I have to look. I think that's the best question. Because one, Shannon didn't see it. And two, um, I had to think about it and it didn't make me upset like I think about the Bruins. Um, 
Okay, okay so let's go to the, the uh, probably the best question because I know we're going to do a lot of this and then during the series and now after it is what you drinking? Uh, Shannon, uh, you've always had good call, good choices of what you drinking. So what kind of whiskey were you drinking last night? What was it called? There is a, I live near like a local market that has whiskey from like all of DC, Maryland and Virginia. So it was one of the rise from like a DC distillery, but I don't remember what I, I only recognize them by the labels. <laughs> so, oh, right, right. And then when they get blurry, they're even better. You're like that one's blurry. So like, I know the orange label when I go and what that tastes like. So I go to the store and pick up that one, but it's pretty good. Um, I like supporting like the local distilleries but obviously there's some like sagamore spirit out of baltimore is really mm -hmm. good uh high west from park city utah is really good um yeah those you, are my you favorite. know your whiskey i drink a lot of whiskey so. are you pot irish by chance yeah i'm 100 percent irish okay well there you go um I'm pot <laughs> irish too, i can say that um because we know walsh is a good italian name um but anyway, uh, for me, I'm a big, you know, I've been drinking the, the long drinks, which I've been liking a lot. Uh, you know, thought it, I never thought I was a big gin guy, but these things you can pound and I've been getting everybody into it. Uh, uh, long drink, feel free to uh, be our sponsor because I've been. I forgot to look, up, look those up. Those are good. Yeah, they're good. They're, good. they're very summery. You can pound them. There's a five and a half percent or there's an eight and a half percent. And there's also one that's with cranberry, which I want to try. The original is with grapefruit juice, gin and some kind of berry. No, I don't know. Dingleberry. I don't know what kind of berries they are, but I don't, <laughs> I don't know, but it's good. It's like a Sprite to a degree kind of thing. Um, maybe, you know, you may have to look it up, a good, but like a Zima back in the day for me, um, but way better. Um, but I drank recently, I went up to Definitive Brewery, uh, brewing up in uh, Kittery, Maine, and they're based out of Portland and got their collaboration with the Burlington Beer Company out of Vermont and the triple IPA. Let me tell you. There's nothing that makes you feel better when you can drink it one beer and get numb. And this one was perfect. It was, it was 10%. So some of them, I don't know if you drink triples at all. Some of them are very, very boozy. It's like you're drinking rubbing alcohol. And I don't like that. I don't get any joy out of drinking a beer that just tastes like, uh, you know, turpentine or kerosene. I'm not into that. So this one was still like a juice bomb, but it was 10%. It was smooth as hell. And it kind of sneaks up on you, then knocks you out. So it was good. So that is, I can't remember the name, exact name of it, but it was Definitive Brewing uh, out of Portland and also Burlington Beer Company out of uh, one of my favorite places on the earth, Burlington, Vermont. Um, That's so, what, um, uh, there's a brewery out of Philadelphia called Victory that has two. Yes, Victory. Yeah, they have two 10%. There's one that's sour and then one that's like a golden ale and they're, but they're both 10% AP, ABV and they both taste like very smooth and they literally slap you in the face after like eight, so, two. <laughs> after this last seat uh series here you need slaps in the face Let me <laughs> and um i know that uh, you know we have to when you come back up to massachusetts bring some of that devil's pelvic bone armpit whatever the hell that oh yes yes that uh, is what i was drinking arm smash. <laughs> arm smash. I, I will pay many many ducats for that um but shannon i know so we're in the off season i, I hope we can get together again and talk about what's coming down the pike and if you guys uh, have any more streams yeah. i'm sure during the rest of the stanley cup finals i'd love to join you and just wallow as montreal wins the cup <laughs> and us throwing ourselves out buildings oh i have to ask you one question <laughs> do you ever watch steve dangle the toronto maple leafs guy you know who he yeah. is oh my god i didn't I, I've seen him on uh, Twitter quite a few times. I've seen some clips, but I haven't okay. watched it. So if you could ever get Steve Dangle, you should try <laughs> to pursue. He is literally like he's must see, a must hear podcast, must see. You, he's on YouTube too. He, I actually, after the Toronto loss, I actually tweeted him. He didn't respond, but I tweeted him and said, I felt bad for him. Like I felt generally sorry for him, not to try to be an asshole, but actually because he's so passionate about that team that you know he's not like a bandwagon. Like he he bleeds white white and blue. Like we bleed, blue, uh, bleed black and gold. Say, I've been in his shoes. I felt his pain. To see them lose the way they lost again, it just, like he was doing a live stream on TSN, watching the game. They were, he was on YouTube and they were watching, the, doing the broadcast. He was watching his reactions. You just, you felt for this guy so bad. There's a, there's a, a channel that we, uh, collaborate with called Hot Take Hockey that's got like 30,000 subscribers, but he's a huge Maple Leafs fan. And so people, while that was going on, we were streaming a different game. And while they were losing, he, people were coming over from his stream and they were like, he's so upset. Like he's not even talking. <laughs> like, I was like, I'm so sorry. Like, it, it's, it's, it's the, 
I think it's the fans. Like, I think that's why a lot of people like, you know, like what I do. It's like the fans who like love the team and they live and die by the team, not the arrogant assholes that are think they're the best thing since sliced bread. Like anytime I see that commercial, I know it's a commercial, but for that, whatever vodka is the, um, the sponsor of the NHL. And I see those, those hack Tampa Bay lightning actors. They have, they're sitting on the beach. Eh, like that's not hockey to me. Like hockey is to me is original six really, you know, that's why Steve Dangle, I'm like, I, I just, I pain for you, Steve Dangle. I pain for you. <laughs> I, I want to get, I have to get him on next year. I think we might get Andrew Raycroft on next year. I, I was tweeting back right. and forth with him. Have you got Billy yet? You should get Billy in the off season. Not yet. Now that it's the off season, I'm going to follow up with him. I will yeah, he'll probably have more time. And you know, he's plugged into the whole league. So, um, but he's fantastic. I, I don't know if you listen to the morning brew, but just great stuff. Um, but anyway, Shannon, it was a great, it was great, uh, you know, talking with you three or four times. I know we're going to hopefully do a lot more of this. Um, so if you want to plug your socials and everything again, feel free. Yeah. Thanks for having me again. We'll definitely keep doing this. Uh, I am a co-host of the Slapshot Sweethearts show. So you can check us out on all social media. Uh, we are on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Apple, Spotify, all those. We're going to, we're still streaming every day throughout the, we're well, not streaming today, actually, that's a lie, but we're still streaming <laughs> almost every day um, for the NHL playoffs. We do live play-by-play watch party type things every night for the games. We'll do that through the playoffs. And then we're trying to do recaps of every team in the off season. We'll have coverage for the expansion draft, all of that. Um, and then if you want to find me on social media, it's S Walshy 63. So just my last name, W A L S H and then six, three, which is Brad Marchand's number. So check me out there. The only guy that gave a shit this, uh, this playoff season. <laughs> um, uh, my, you know, I want to thank everybody for the inaugural season, of the big bad Bruins banter podcast, uh, all our, uh, all our guests like Shannon, uh, Billy Jaffe, and Andrew from Short Shift. I forgot Andrew's last name. You know who you, know who you are, my friend. Um, thanks for joining us. I want to thank everybody for supporting me, supporting Big Bad Bruins Nation. Again, you guys are family. It means a lot to me. Um, and so follow me, Big Bad Bruins Nation, on the, on the YouTube, on the Gram, and Big Bad Bruins 88 on the Twitter machine. So uh, we'll be talking over the course of the uh, offseason, and uh, let's hope to God we can win a cup before I die. So... Uh, you guys be good, be safe, and we'll talk soon. Uh, and uh, that's it. That's all, folks.